After months of testing Windows 10 very publicly, it's finally officially here. It's a free upgrade for most people too, but should you upgrade? Windows 10 is the realisation of Microsoft's big dream to have a single Windows that runs across PCs, tablets, phones and even the company's Xbox One console. Right now, Windows 10 is mostly about fixing the mess that Microsoft created with Windows 8. One of the first signs of that is the return of the start menu you know and love. It's not just the regular one from Windows 7. Instead, Microsoft has combined the best aspects of the last two versions of Windows to create a redesigned start menu. The live tiles from Windows 8 remain, but you're no longer booted into an entirely different full screen interface. There's a traditional list of apps, easy access to power options and settings, and the ability to resize the menu freely. Windows 10 has a nice, dark theme and it blends in well against laptop screens that usually have black bezels. If you're not a fan of the darkness, then there are plenty of colour options to change the look of the start menu and taskbar. There's even little transparency effects that finish off the look and feel. Navigating around Windows 8 was painful with a laptop or PC, and Windows 10 has improved massively. The annoying hot corners of Windows 8 are gone, and Microsoft has removed the weird charms bar. In its place is a new action centre that works as a notification centre to collect any alerts from apps and provide quick access to a bunch of settings. Snapping apps has been a popular feature of Windows and Microsoft has tweaked it slightly here. There's a new Snap Assist feature that makes it a lot easier to find what apps are open to snap them side by side. There's also a new Task View feature that's a lot like Mission Control on the Mac. It displays all your open windows on a single screen and you can find what you're looking for quickly. It's also a gateway to a new Virtual Desktops feature. Yes, you can finally create separate virtual desktops without having to install a third party app. It's mainly a power of user feature, but it's useful if you want to separate apps on a laptop where you don't have a lot of screen space. One of the biggest additions to Windows 10 is Microsoft's virtual assistant, Cortana. It's designed to look and feel like an extension to the start menu. Just like the Windows Phone equivalent, you can use your voice to search or type in queries manually. There's even an option to enable a Hey Cortana feature that lets you simply holler questions at your laptop. It's perfect if you're leaning back in an office chair and want to fire off emails with your voice, but I found I mostly used it to demonstrate Cortana to friends and family. Cortana also has a helpful overview of your day, mixed in with interests like weather, news and local restaurants. Cortana also has a powerful local search to find your documents on your local hard drive or from the OneDrive cloud storage service. With a new version of Windows comes a new browser called Edge. It might be designed to succeed Internet Explorer, but it sticks to the past in a number of ways. Edge's taskbar icon is barely different from Internet Explorer, in an effort to keep it similar for the millions of diverse Windows users. Edge is simplified, clean and performs well in most cases, but there's a few things missing and the lack of features you might expect from a modern browser. Snapping tabs into separate windows is messy, downloads start automatically with no choice of folder and there's no save target apps. Microsoft really started from scratch with Edge and it shows. Microsoft has still included a copy of Internet Explorer in Windows 10 for this very reason. Edge does have some interesting new features. You could draw all over web pages and send a copy to friends, and Cortana appears to provide you useful information in clever little ways. If you search for something in the address bar like weather, then it will immediately show the weather nearby. On some restaurant websites, it will even appear to provide you directions or opening hours. It's not just a neat little trick, but it's actually useful when you don't have to search for this basic information. Microsoft's Xbox app for Windows 10 might be my favourite new feature. You can stream Xbox One games to a laptop and just plug in a controller to play. It works surprisingly well with no lag even over a Wi-Fi network. You can only use it at home on a local network, but it's fun if you want to play Xbox games in another room where you don't have a TV. The Xbox app also has access to Xbox Live and the ability to create party chats from your PC to talk to Xbox One friends. A nice little surprise feature of the Xbox app is screen recording. You can use it to create game clips or even just record regular apps that aren't games at all. That's really useful if you want to create screen tutorials and it saves them to buy an expensive third party app to do it. The Mail and Calendar apps both support Google accounts, so they're easy to use without an Outlook account. You'll also notice that these apps no longer run full screen by default anymore. Microsoft has changed that with Windows 10, so you can now window these apps and move them around freely. And that makes them a lot more usable. The most impressive additions are the new stripped down, touch-based Office apps. Word, Excel, PowerPoint are all available for free and they're a delight to use. They're speedy and simple, with just enough features for basic editing and none of the bloat of the full desktop Office apps. The new and improved Windows Store has finally combined apps, games, music, movies and TV, but there's still a lack of quality apps. 
While most of Windows 10's improvements are focused on the mouse and keyboard, Microsoft hasn't forgotten about the good touch work that went into Windows 8. A new tablet mode in Windows 10 aims to bridge the full screen world of Windows 8 with the traditional way you use a Windows PC. It's perfect for two-in-one convertible laptops and prompts allow you to switch easily between using a mouse and keyboard and flipping the hardware into a tablet mode. So should you upgrade? If you can deal with a few oddities here and there and you're frustrated with Windows 8, then by all means, upgrade now. But if you depend on your Windows computer on a daily basis and it's working fine for you, you should probably hold off until everything's a little bit more polished. I run into a variety of issues where my download folder takes 30 seconds to load, my audio stops working, or apps like Mail just randomly break and crash. Some of the problems aren't critical, but they can certainly be frustrating. I like the direction Microsoft is taking with Windows 10, accepted feedback and ideas from its customers along the way. It feels like the best way to shape Windows into something that people enjoy using, rather than that they have to use. Windows 10 is a great fix to the problems of Windows 8, and it's clearly the version of Windows we'll all be using for many, many years. As Microsoft moves to regular updates instead of major versions every few years, it feels like the cycle of good and bad versions of Windows could finally be over. Microsoft might have just pulled that off. Windows 10 is good, and it's here to stay. And that's very exciting.